Modern CPUs are usually pretty reliable, so it came as a shock to people when their shiny new Intel Core i9 processor started crashing for reasons unknown, and was even more shocking when they went online and found that there's been a great deal of frustration about instability issues with Intel's 13th and 14th gen Core i9s, along with some Core i7s and even lower tier chips that has gotten so bad that motherboard manufacturers were compelled to push out BIOS updates to to help fix the problem. But who's to blame for these issues? Is Intel pushing out shoddy chips? Is another component manufacturer at fault? Was it Colonel Mustard in the conservatory with the candlestick? Well, the story is actually pretty complicated and has its roots in competition between motherboard manufacturers. However, that doesn't mean that Intel shouldn't be shouldering some of the blame as well. Let's go back though. Compared to a couple of decades ago, these days there isn't much to separate one motherboard from another in terms of raw performance, with manufacturers instead focusing more on the feature set that a motherboard offers. But that doesn't mean that the motherboard companies aren't trying to convince people that their products are faster than the other guys, even if it's only by a few percentage points. And this is where the trouble begins. You see, Intel tells the motherboard companies not to enable CPU overclocking out of the box. Users can of course overclock their chips later if they want to, but when you turn your PC on for the first time, you expect things to be running at stock, right? Well, the motherboard companies took no overclocking, mostly to mean don't mess with the base clock and the multiplier, which are the main settings used to derive the clock speed. And they didn't mess with those, but unfortunately they took liberties with other settings. Specifically, motherboard manufacturers were setting the load lines incorrectly. And if you don't know what load lines do, they basically help keep the CPU stable when it's dealing with a significant load. Doing this had the intended effect of the CPU running cooler than it otherwise would have been. And when the system saw the CPU was cool, it would boost the CPU's speed, which the mother manufacturers could possibly use to say that their board was delivering better performance but the load line configuration meant that they couldn't ensure stability at those boosted speeds. Meanwhile, the CPU cores would boost too much, resulting in instability, and the load lines being out of whack meant that the CPU voltages would then overboost, which could damage the CPU permanently. This was all compounded by some BIOSes not lowering the clock speeds until the CPU temperature hit around 100 degrees Celsius, which is much warmer than the usual threshold. Of course, the motherboard companies were hoping the chips would be fine, but unfortunately, reports of instability popped up from users running Cinebench, Unreal Engine based and similar games, and decompression software. Higher end chips were hit harder as their high voltages, speeds and temperatures caused greater instability and even chip degradation in some cases, resulting in the need for an RMA to Intel. Investigations like the one undertaken by the developers of the game Warframe showed that the problems were overwhelmingly on Core i9s and some Core i7s. Now, we did say that motherboard manufacturers tried to address these issues. Unfortunately, their initial fixes didn't do much good or even made the situation worse. And we'll tell you why and how Intel themselves share the blame here right after we thank Moosend. Moosend is an email marketing platform that provides business owners with a suite of tools to improve customer relationships through personalized outreach. You can send professional looking emails and craft visually stunning landing pages with Moosend's campaign editor. They also integrate a whole slew of popular e-commerce platforms, allowing businesses to streamline all their marketing efforts. So what are you waiting for? Get a move on it and follow the link in the video description to try Moosend for free for 30 days and save 10%. After the news and people's CPUs broke, BIOS updates started popping up that were described as Intel baseline or Intel failsafe. Except this didn't actually mean Intel's intended default settings. For example, Asus came out with a BIOS that just jammed more voltage through the chip to try to stabilize it, even though Intel baseline would imply that it uses more conservative settings. This did help with stability for many users, but it also had the unintended side effect of making their chips degrade faster. And then once that happens, you need even more voltage to keep them stable and so on and so forth until the point of no return. But while motherboard companies stepped over the line in trying to achieve performance advantages and in trying to fix this, some of the blame does lie with Intel. For starters, 
One reason motherboard manufacturers felt that they were able to mess with the overclock settings the way they did, and why later BIOS fixes didn't completely work, is because Intel's guidance about proper voltages was actually quite vague, including for how long the load lines could be set. Intel also identified a bug in an Intel feature called ETVB and admitted that there was an issue with the CPUs themselves that resulted in incorrect voltage requests to the processor. That affected all 13th and 14th gen chips that were rated at 65 watts and higher. And although they didn't give any additional details, it sounds like this may have been a contributing factor to motherboards delivering too many volts to the CPU cores. Whoever owns which percentage of the blame though, the truth is Intel's reputation has been tarnished to the point where one game developer has announced they're migrating all of their servers to AMD CPUs. And while it isn't clear exactly why the ETVB bug is present, it appears that toward the end of 2023, Intel was already trying to get motherboard companies to rush out BIOS updates right around the time this problem started to rear its ugly head, which may have been the origin of the ETVB problem. But take that with a grain of salt. The good news, at least, is that Intel has now released recommendations for the correct settings to be applied to fix these instability problems. And as of the time we wrote this, the major motherboard manufacturers have put these defaults into updated BIOSes, as well as a microcode patch for the ETVB bug for boards with 600 and 700 series chipsets. So please, go download the latest BIOS for your motherboard as soon as possible. Like, right now. Even though Intel has said the fix for the root issue contributing to excessive voltage isn't coming until the middle of August, the current BIOS updates should make your system more stable and at least prevent damage to your CPU in the meantime. If for some reason you're still having stability issues and you don't have time for system downtime to RMA your CPU to Intel, you can try turning your CPU's clock speed down by about 300 megahertz by adjusting the multiplier in your BIOS. Hopefully that'll at least keep you limping along in the meantime. The one positive that we hope comes out of all of this is Intel hopefully keeping a closer eye on exactly how motherboard manufacturers build their products and configure them before they leave the factory because it appears there's been not enough oversight. I understand it. I mean, with so many boards out there, it's harder for Intel than, say, NVIDIA, who has a more limited number of add-in board partner graphics cards to examine. But Team Blue, obviously, is going to just have to bite the bullet here, no matter how many motherboards are out there, because another hit to their reputation like this is not going to feel good. By the way, there is another wrinkle in all of this. Intel has said that some reports of instability can be traced back to Intel themselves to a manufacturing error that involved oxidation of some early 13th gen chips. So if you bought your chip in early 2023 or prior, that could be part of your problem. And seeing as it's a physical issue with the chip, that wouldn't be fixed with a microcode update. So you will need to RMA to Intel. Have you had any problems with Intel's latest chips? Comment down below. And if you wanna find out why electronics die in general, go watch this video next.